Napokea. We believe in it. <clears throat> but sometimes it's overrated, it's overdone. What is star? In a simple, in the simple terms. A star is the special favors God has bestowed in somebody. That dimension fulani akibali that God has placed on somebody. So when you hear somebody saying your star is bright, it means those the, the, the favor of God that is functioning in you is, is outstanding. So it's a special favor of God in a particular area. There are people who have that favor in marriage, favor in business, favor in this. So that's what they call star. Because Jesus was born with a particular kingship level of favor. So when they saw the star of, a, of Jesus, it was looking like the star that they usually see when a king is born. Because he came in the spirit of leadership. He came to bring back what was lost to, the, to God his father. And he needed that anointing of a king to come and command back men to their mecca. So when the, kings, the, when, the, when the wise men saw the star, they connected him with the king. And they said there is a king that has been born. Are you following what I'm saying? So, so a star, as far as I'm concerned in the prophetic, when you hear somebody saying your star is bright, you shall do well in business. You, you, are, you are going to do well in the marketplace. You are going to do well in ministry. I see you doing well. It is, they have seen a star in that particular area. Now, what do we call it? A special favors put on a man by God in, for a particular area. So there are those who have a star of business, star of marriage, star of this, star of this. Not necessarily kuna nyota mahali mehang juyako. It's the spirit of God that is functioning in you. Am I communicating now? That makes you to be liked by people in a particular area. They just want to favor you. You are selling. They want to buy from your shop. You are, you are preaching. They want to listen to your preaching. You are a singer. They like hearing your voice. Because you have a special favor in that area. Whatever you do, they just like it. So we say your star is bright in that area. Does it make sense? But now when some people who have not digged this revelation deeper, as far as I'm concerned, with a small light. Amen. And because Kenya, we like extreme things. Oh, we like it. We like it. And that's why till tomorrow, with all the preaching we are preaching, people will still be given poison and they will drink on the altar in the name of anointing. It was in this country that a man opened a church called Hanis, uh, Hanis Sarkas Ministry. Is anybody who ever heard of that ministry? A Nigerian man who was sucking women's breasts in this town. Or oh, you want to behave like you never heard of it? And trust you me, people who are going there, do you know why? We like things that are extreme. When you teach people something that is sober, they think you are not deep. You become deep when you tell women to come to church without bra. And the deliverance only happened through sucking their breast. And uh -huh, now this is the man of God we are looking for. Power. Nonsense. But when we teach you sober word with the root, uh -huh, you question, why is it not going deeper? The deeper you want is the one without breast. Is that what we call deeper? <clears throat> How can a man of God preach one message for 20 years? How do your members grow? And you'll be surprised. Those churches are full with people. You'll be surprised. You are not concentrating on your personal spiritual growth. You are concentrating on how to win because you want to preach to them what they want to understand. And by the grace of God, I'm a prophet. If I choose to prophesy in this service, every service, I'm just preaching on prophecy and I'm prophesying. This church will not, will not contain us. But I know the church doesn't grow by prophecy. The church grows by word. What will keep you here for the next three years is the word that you have. Not the prophecy I gave. But because I want your money and I want you to like me because I'm telling you what you want to hear. I must keep telling you that thing every day. You'll be surprised. There are pastors who have declared their dangerous deliverance minister. If I go to their church, I will find someone to deliver in that church. But they are dangerous. We know them for deliverance. But when I go there, I will deliver somebody. Why didn't you remove all the demons? I'm a dangerous prophet. When a prophet comes here, he will find someone to prophesy. Why haven't I prophesied everybody? So I'm 
a healing minister. So I should have healed everybody in my church. So when they come, they don't have anybody here to heal. There is something about ministry you don't understand. When people put their interest first, they win you fast and get your money. And then they lose you. They are not interested in your tomorrow. Let me suck what I can get from this one. Because I know this one will not stay here. Let me collect what I can collect. Even if you go now, I've collected my own share. I, milk and drink. This is Nairobi, sir. Are you following what I'm saying? Sit down. I know that nonsense, but I choose not to do it because I'm looking at future. I know this way, the way you are like this, you cannot give me so much. Let me help you to get where God wants us to go. So when you get there, now I can get the best out of you. But what they do is they are busy looking for what they can get now because they are not sure if you come next Sunday. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? They are not sure if next Sunday they will come. So what they do, they make sure we finish with you here. But because I'm sure you come next Sunday, I'm not interested. I'll push you with, with by fire. You not like it, you like it. You pray. When you come out of that stagnation, now we can begin to chop life. So at that point, if you choose to leave me now, I will tell you the same same grace as a reverse gear. Don't forget. Why should I be laboring with you when you have nothing? Now when you have something, now you are going to another church. Are you are you a child of God? Now do you understand where the error is? And apparently, that's what we celebrate. That's what we call grace. But some balance and some soberness. I would just say, look for a seed, come and connect to the altar. But you hear them giving revelation of seed number. Today, they are talking about number three, why you need to give 3,000. Next Sunday, they are talking about why you give to 7,000. Next Sunday, why you need to give 9,000. Next Sunday, they are, why you need to give 12,000. Next Sunday, why you need to do Next Sunday, they, they are always having a revelation behind a particular number. Why you must give certain, certain money concerning every day. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Even here we pay bills, but we don't do that nonsense. Let me struggle with the bills of the church if I have to lie. If God tells me to tell you to do something, I say by revelation. So if you don't want to obey, it's up to you. And by the grace of God, I don't follow people regarding seed. If you have been in this church. Once God say give, you give, you don't give. I told you what God said, I'm done. So when God, you don't see God, when you come to my office, I take you back. When the Lord said, give 10, did you give 10? No. Okay, go back and do it. And that's how disciplined I am. Because I don't want to deceive you. So I must force you to do the right thing. Which is, people don't like right. People like left. Oh, you didn't hear what I'm saying. One of our brothers in this town, from early 2009, 10, 8, 7, 8, 9, came with the revelation of 310. There are people even in this church who sent that 310. Because we want to hear that. Tuma Sahi. Tuma Sahi. This is how he talks to your spirit. That is what I wanted to hear. Here, Prophet Robert of Skid interpretation nonsense. That's wasting my time. Tell me I can drop a seed quickly. I want to get out of this thing. You get it quickly, it leaves you quickly. Are we together here? And I decided to do the right thing. It might take me long to get there. But somehow I'll get there. Right is always the best. Right is always the best. It might be slow, but sure. You trust, you trace me for the past years I've been doing ministry. You will not find one person I've ever manipulated to give without their consent, without their faith, without their witness in their spirit. <clears throat> there are people who told me, Prophet, if I had the gift you have, I would be driving the best car around. I'm not doing ministry for the best car. If Jesus started to come, what I'm, I mean, I'm looking at big things. Are you here? And apparently, people who have given me big money in ministry are not Christians. Most people who have given me good money as Muslims and people who are not even my members. Some are Catholic members. I was praying on the mountain and I needed fuel to come from Nairobi and I called my pastor. And I thank God they sent me some money. But it was not able to even Guru Mesha Garyang. You know me, I don't carry secrets. 
Are you following what I'm saying? The one of my daughters from somewhere by the grace of God that my God has touched her life. Say, brother, I saw you in the mountain. What can I do? That's the kind of members I want God to make you. Not that I must tell you give. No, man of God, what can I do? What do I need to do? I say I need some fuel. Bah! She did not ask me how much. She asked me how much is your full tank. <clears throat> so by wisdom, I put half tank. So this other half tank, I can carry milk. When I go back to the house, at least I can put my family together. Are you following what I'm saying? The Bible says, the sons of the prophet told the prophet, where we are dwelling is too small. Allow us to go to the river and cut wood and come back and build a house of the Lord. It was not a prophet telling them, this place, we don't need to stay here. It was the people by deep revelations they have received, telling the man of God, I don't think we need, we, we, this is not our level. Man of God, we need to put a carpet here. This, this, this place should not be, this is not our level. We need to buy a better sound. We, it is supposed to come from members, but do you know where it comes from, Pastor. Jesus. Even buying your pastor a shoe, Pastor Marcel, the church, no, we are still having a journey to go. <clears throat> when last did you sit and thought we need to buy a prophet a suit? I'm a Rodia Jesus Akezakotosha. You know, if you have not yet come to that level, I'm still, I still have work. <clears throat> a serious work for that matter. Because me, I'm a sower. I can wake up tomorrow, I can give all my suits. We were in the tent, I gave all the suits I had. Do you remember? Just a few months ago, the Lord told me, go and remove every suit. Some people I gave the suits, they're no longer my members. One thing I know, if I give you my dress, is a mantle. If you are talking against me, you will not come back to this church. Something will just, you, you cannot put on my shoe or my dress or my watch. or my, You cannot take money from my hands and you go and talk about me. It cannot work. It's a mantle. Any day you put it on you, something will just say, you leave, 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 leave. And you don't know what is pursuing you. You don't know. If I give people my shoes or my clothes and they stay around, I can tell their heart is pure. Majority, if I give them my dress or my suit or my something, the next two, three months, they will disappear. And I know that's why I'm afraid of late. One of my sons came and said, Papa, there is one of your suits I like. The day God will talk to you, I will call it as a mantle. I told him, if I give you, you leave my church. You have checked in the spirit. I know I cannot give you. A particular suit, he liked that suit. He even sent me a picture. I said, sir, I, I, by the grace of God, I no longer wear it even frequently, but I fear losing you, so I will not give you. Are you here? Prophetic ministry is a mystery. Amen and amen. It's okay there now. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> so I've talked about dark star. I've talked about sun. In the book, there is, I will do about the moon, the day, the light, and so on. So those ones I cannot do now because you must buy the book. Amen. Amen and amen. Now, there are things when you see, there are symbols very quickly because we are closing the interpretation today. <clears throat> Tomorrow, next time, we are starting on something else. When you see the key in the prophetic, it could mean power to lock or to unlock, power to lock or unlock, certain things or certain places or certain doors. Number two, keys could also mean open doors, open heaven, operating under certain open doors, open heaven. Keys could also symbolize connection, divine connection, because men can be keys and men can be padlocks. <clears throat> one man can open for you a door. And one man can close for you a door. 
Are we together? A key could symbolize access to certain opportunities. And the key could also symbolize certain advantages. Certain advantages. God just put you in a place of advantage where you enjoy certain things. Amen? Because you know when you are disadvantaged and when you are advantaged. Are we together? When you see a mirror in the prophetic, it could symbolize the reflection of the word of God in our lives. The reflection of the word of God in our lives. The Bible says like a mirror. Amen. When you look at a mirror, all you see is yourself. But what happens when you are looking at a mirror and you saw it magnifying? You know like the way magnifying lens. When you look at yourself, your head becomes big. If you put your hands, it becomes big. If it was a lens, it was a mirror, but it's like a magnifying lens kind of. Jesus Christ. You guys have taken long fixing that thing. You interfere with my spirit. If... If it was a magnifying lens, it could mean there is going to be a spiritual growth and expansion in one's life. But now, when we come to the dream dimension, a mirror signifies witchcraft. Do you see the difference? Signifies what? Witchcraft. So those are two different things. When you see water as I close on interpretation, when you see water, water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. When it is a fresh water, when it is a rain or dirty water, rain water, like the flood, it symbolizes attack. The Bible says the enemy shall rise like a flood, like a flood, meaning a flood is likened to the enemy, and the Lord shall raise standards against him. Are we together? So when is a rain water, flood or dirty water, it symbolizes what? Attack. When it is rain water fresh from heaven, that force you are walking and it was raining on you. Interpretation will be, will be different when it was a hailstone kind of rain. If it is a hailstone kind of rain, you are walking and it was raining on you and there were hailstones, it means there, are, there is an attack. But if it was just a normal rain, whether much or less, rain signifies blessing. It signifies what? Blessing. <clears throat> if you see heavy wind, it also means attack. Now, when you see a river, a river that is flowing and is not wild, you know there's a way a river can be wild. Are we together? It could signify a blessing. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow the rivers of living water. <clears throat> the rivers of living water. It could be a blessing. But if it was the way sometimes when it rains, the rivers behave wild, 
inajai kona kelele inabeba vitu there is an attack when you see a, a massive water body a massive water body like an ocean it could signify two things this one I'm giving you notice in the book I'm talking from the or the revelation are we together a massive water body it could signify number one, the masses of people masses of people masses of people and big water bodies like the sea the ocean could also signify a principality could also signify what a principality and i thank god for the apostle who was preaching in the all night and he dissected that part when he said pharaoh was worshiping a marine spirit <clears throat> in egypt they worship the water gods and if you check the egyptian gods till today those that are still there one part is human one part is fish and he explained it deeper and i thank god for those who are here they learned something <clears throat> and he said he said when you see half fish half human meaning there is what that which is below is what sustains what is up because from my stomach going up is upright because my legs are standing if i was to sleep this way it's not my waist that determines it's the position of my leg that determines the position of my head are you following something yes. if i try to put my legs this way my head will be this way if i put my legs this way my head will be this way so the position of my leg determines the position of my head if my leg is facing this side my face by nature i must face this side there's no way my legs can follow this side and me i'm facing this it's not possible are you following what i'm saying so meaning the direction of the entire being is controlled by and the fact that the fish part is from here going down meaning the source of strength is in the sea i picked and said i would explain it here are you now learning something so that's why when God wanted to attack Egypt, he first told Moses to turn water into blood. And he explained very well, water doesn't carry one fish. There are many fishes. Is that right? And the Bible says when Moses did that, the fish, the word the in English, for those who are teaching English, that word the is a different word. It's, it's just it's concentrating on one particular. Not fish. When I say prophet Robert, is different from when I say the prophet. Those are two different words. And that's why we don't have President William Ruto. We have His Excellency the. Oh, let me teach you some grammar here. His Excellency the governor. His Excellency the president. Because you only have one at a time. So you must put the word there, that article there, to concentrate on that particular singular person. Are you learning something? So when it comes to the prophetic, you don't read Bible and run with it. And that's why prophets, in most cases, they are not teachers. By the grace of God, I'm enjoying it. It's just a grace. Most prophets are not teachers. Because they pick one revelation, they go with it. It's a weakness of our office. So even me, I'm just trying to adjust. God helping me. Are you following what I'm saying? So it is the half part which is on the lower side that controls the up. If I have to come there, Will my legs bring me or my hands? The way I will face will be determined by where my leg is facing. If my leg is facing a memo, you see my head there. You cannot find my face here. And my leg is there. It doesn't work. So when you see that, that's it. So what happened is that the fish now, the fish, the particular one that was like the queen, of the powers or the marine or whatever it is is the one that died when the, the rods touched the water and why blood to show that the life that it was having left the life did what somebody can be too bad in meuma lakini kama ujaona damu is different but in Isaac, we are umia sana. But in the fact that kuna dam, everybody will be worried. Hey, we are umia, we are umia, we are umia. But in the fact that kama ija ija toa damu, we are kuleza we are umia. Una una toa machozi, but we are kuleza. Do you know why? Because they are not seeing anything. 
Bahata kama ni kidogo nimetoa damu kama kwa kichwa ni chi. Hey, wanasema ameumia huyo. Hey, kila mtu ameumia. Na ni kitu kidogo tu ni venye imegoza the wrong place damu imeenda sana. So that's why when the water was touched, red blood had to come. Number one. Number two, so that the, the God was killing the principality behind their strength. So God now later can harden his heart. And I told you the plagues that happened in Egypt was never for Egyptians. It was for the Israelites. Because they had to come back. And the only way they would come back is when they saw what God is doing. They would say, what a mighty God. This is a God. This is our God. They will brag with his name. Am I communicating? So when you see the water bodies, big water bodies, it may mean masses. And how? Maybe if it was in a line of business or a line of family, whatever. There is a certain favor God will give you the crowd of people. Or there is a crowd of people gathering together to fight you. Or it could also mean a principality. The issue, the word marine spirits means a principality that control marine body, water bodies. Amen. You cannot see water in a basin and then you begin to think about marine powers. But when you come by the ocean, by the sea, by big water bodies, that mindset of marine evil spirits can easily come into your mind. Anybody with a question, anything you want me to help you interpret, because today I'm doing that, today is the last day for interpretation. If you did not hear some of it, we are live, you can go back and take your time and listen. What you think that I did not touch, that you think I should touch, because, uh-huh, fire. Okay. <clears throat> now, when you see fire, I will give three dimensions. Number one, the Bible says, for our God is a consuming fire. Amen? Amen. So fire could symbolize God himself. That is number one. Number two, when you see fire in the prophetic, it could also mean attention. What? Attention. The Bible says, and Moses saw a burning bush, but the bush was not consumed. Why? Because God needed Moses' attention. And the Bible says, and when Moses turned to look at the fire, the Lord now spoke. The Lord first seeked his attention, and that's why many of us, we are going through different fires. Hello? Some of us, if it was not fire in your house, you would not be here this morning. Some of us, if it was not fire because in your finances, you would not be here. Are you following what I'm saying? Sometimes God allow the fire to seek what? Attention. Does it make sense? Number three dimension. Okay. Maybe you'd have a microphone. Okay, it's okay. That's all. But I've not finished. But just ask. In the prophetic, I give both. I give prophetic, then I give dreams where, where necessary. But I told you I'm concentrating on prophetic because I've done a lot of dream interpretation. It's on our YouTube. Dream interpretation, I've done a lot. Okay. So let me finish, then you ask, then you ask. So I said number one is what? It signifies God. Is that so? For our God is the consuming fire. Number two, I said attention. Mo when Moses saw bush burning, but the, the bush was not consumed, God wanted Moses what? Attention. Number three, fire also means purification. I can give more than ten. I think maybe when we are doing the book, remind me so we can add more. Maybe? Because fire purifies. Is that so? Fire separates. If you want to separate a metal from a metal, you apply what? <clears throat> are we together? Fire softens. If you want to bend this metal, oh. If you want to bend this metal, the way it is cold, it is hard to bend it, isn't it? But if you put it in fire, it will be soft. So you can easily bend it because it has been exposed to what? To heat. Some of us, God released fire in our life so that it can bend us. We are too stiff. Kuna kitu umiamini na wizi tolewa hapo. Ujawai amini pasa na zakuombea na upone. Ujawai amini na izatua pesa unga nisani na munga nibariki. So God has to atta allow attack in your finances to bend you. Oh, you didn't hear what I said? 
<laughs> it's not a sweet one, but it's good, isn't it? I can give you more than 10. Please, in that fire particularly, you remind me we add something. So those ones are enough for now. Three. Dreams. Uh -huh. Repeated dreams. When you have a dream that repeats itself, number one, yeah, the other one I'm explaining to, is the number of God. Number two is the number of witness. Number three signifies trinity. The Bible says where two or three are gathered. So meaning you can have two witnesses or three witnesses. And even in the court of law. Is it so? You can, you can be allowed to have as many witnesses but at least should be two. Eyewitnesses. Two different people who can explain it from their different perspective. Is that so? But you cannot say I have one witness, there's nobody else. This is the only one I have. At least you need to hear from another person. So when we compare this one and this one, we can marry. Is that so? Now there we go. <clears throat> Let me finish with him. <laughs> so when you have a particular dream and it repeats itself more than twice, more than three times, is a confirmation that God is trying to tell you something. So you must be careful about what you dream about. Number one, it may mean it will come to pass what you are dreaming, or God is trying to wake you up to pray against it from it being actualized. So it may mean a good thing coming or a bad thing coming, but there is an assurity in the spirit that if you don't do something about it, it will happen. Does it make sense now? So the repetition part of it is to bring your attention. Maybe you saw it first time, you looked at that, you look, you, 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 down, you down played it. I hope it was serious. Uh -huh. That one was fast. The dream interpretation. Okay. When you dream, you must pray. Whether good dream or bad dream. Why do you pray about good dreams? So that it comes to pass. Why do you pray about bad dreams to stop them from coming to pass? We together? So whether it is a prophetic release, whether it's a dream, you must pray about it. Because I told you last week, when we finish a conference, the one we finish, the devil will come to retaliate. Did I say it? That we must go through prayer. And the people have, this week, there were people who have been sick. Others, they have been on serious different attacks. Rita? Why is the devil retaliating? But adventure you don't get to what God said you should get to. So it's my work when I receive a prophetic word to labor with it. Paul is telling Timothy, use the prophecies given concerning you and wage a good warfare. Are we together now? Yes. Have I answered? So the difference between prophetic interpretation and dream interpretation is that prophetic interpretation, you totally depend on the spirit of the Lord God to lead you and tell you what it means. Now, dream interpretation, you can easily relate you can do what I call relatory. You can relate it with something and interpret it. And that's why I don't believe in these members of this church in downloading the meaning of dream. Don't Google. Google does not know how to hear the voice of God. Does it make sense now? So Google can't help you. Because now I've told you, now how can you tell? Go and ask Google. Give me a prophetic meaning. You can go and try. Go and tell Google after this service. Give me a prophetic meaning of a branch of a tree. And come and check my notes. You know, it's not about Google. Because the people who work for Google, most of them are not even born again. Okay, now your question. When is 10, you let me know. When is 10, you let me know. A bag? A bag with many colors. Okay. Number one, do we understand the meaning of a bag? Before we go to many colors. Many colors signify glory. A higher level of glory. Many colors, generally. And that's what the Bible says, when he loved Jacob, I mean uh, Joseph, he did him a, a cloth with many colors. And the brothers were not happy. Do you know why? Like he put a lot of concentration on him. It was too glorious. Amen. 
So what does the bag signify? Can somebody try? With the now understanding you have. Anybody you can. So I will connect the two for you. Give, give her a microphone so that the people who are following online can hear. <clears throat> yeah, give her a microphone so that the people who are following online can hear. I would suggest that a, a bag is used to carry something. Uh -huh. So probably you've been told you are carrying so many blessings or something. You are carrying something. That's a good trial. Somebody else? We have one minute to go. Anybody else want to try a bag? I will tell you whether you are correct or not, but she's still okay because a bag is to carry, isn't it? Uh huh. I concur with her that uh, a bag is a carrier. Uh -huh. So it either it, it carries your blessings or rather your goods, whatever is for you. So I think if you have a bag and uh, you, your blessings are in it. If it is empty, it means that it has been stolen or taken. But I think if, when it is full, it means that your blessings are intact. So it depends on what you're going to do with the bag. Okay, that's good. Any last person on that? I want, I want to know if you are learning, isn't it? Any last person want to try? Now, when you see a bag with many colors, <clears throat> a bag, number one, is to carry. Number two, is for storage. Number three, is to show a travel. The size of your bag will tell us how long you are going to stay where you are going. You cannot be leaving for the village and you are coming back today and you are pulling a full bag. Is it practical? If you are rushing to the village, you are going to come back. You can even go without carrying anything. Or if it's a bag, it's a small one. Or for ladies, just a normal one. But if you are going to stay somewhere for two weeks, three weeks, the kind of a bag you are pulling should tell us where you are going and how long you are going to stay. Now follow me. <laughs> I'm already answering you, isn't it? Yes, even the, the, there's so much involved. So the question would be, what was the size of the bag? How big? Was it small? With what I've explained. Now, it was glorious because of the many colors. So that part we have already sealed. So it could mean there is a journey that God is taking you. There is a journey God wants you to walk with him that will carry along a particular dimension of glory. Does it make sense now? that need a lot of concentration and attacks will be on your way. Because anything good must attract attack. The glory part of it is what now, so you are embarking on a journey with God with too much of glory and favor that there will be so much of what also attack on the way. Did I answer you? Any last two questions? I want us to pray and then we go into the service. We are behind time already. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, that's a, uh, you, have, you have asked, let me take from the two. They have not talked. Uh -huh. Take the microphone, Pastor. When you saw number 6171. When you saw? Number. Number. 6171. 6171. Yes. Okay. Put your hands together for Jesus. Okay, give her also to ask her a question. So we answer at once. Number is 61, 71. Powerful. Okay, now I'll answer. Give her. That's the easiest, isn't it? That on anybody can do interpretation. Uh-huh. Uh, sh shoes or a behind con? You see a shoe, a high or low? Mm, could be any. Could be any. Yeah, but in most cases, it's a... Uh, a lost shoe. A lost shoe. Mm. Okay. I will tell you this one. I will tell you both the dream and the prophetic. Amen. The last question. The last two questions. Pastor and then, and then pastor. Give pastor. And then give pastor. I think uh, 
I take two more and then I answer all of them and then we are done. Uh -huh. uh, this one I need to understand in uh -huh. the prophetic way. Uh -huh. A lost padlock. Padlock. You, are, you, are you, are, told... you are looking for a padlock that is lost. That is lost. Okay. In the prophetic. Yeah. Thank you. Ah. Dreams where phones are involved. Either the touch or, 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 the, the, or the normal one. Yes. Okay. Can somebody help me with the 6171? You are, you are seeing 6171. You bring it to 10. <coughs> 6171. Okay, I want you to try in your own wisdom, as the Lord allows. Can you try? First, you need to factor in what is number one signifying, what is number six signifying, what is number one signifying, and what is number seven signifying. So not every time you... Let me help you because of time. Let me be fast. Eh? I've closed it. Not every time you, you sum it, but sometimes you can sum it up. So we are going to try a two dimensions of interpretation. Are we together? So the first one, let's go his way. Can we put a sum total of that number? How much is it? How many? How what is it in total? Six plus one plus seven plus six, six plus one plus seven plus one. Fifteen. So then we try to interpret what one five stands for. Is that okay? But also, we can now go deeper into what is one, what is six, what is one, what is seven. And when we connect it in a row, what does it mean? So as a starter, I would not advise you to sum it up because you may confuse the entire meaning. Why? I said in interpretation, keep it simple. I said in interpretation, do what? Keep it simple. When you make it simple, you get the best out of it. When you meet, when you add up, you may not be able, not, mostly, if you are not used to it, doing it, you may not be able to get it. But it's easier when you put a total together. Are we together? But in most cases, if you don't understand the spiritual context of that issue, context, because what it may mean may be different from somebody, so that if you, you have to be able to understand. Now, there we go. One signifies God. Six is the number of man. One, again, is the number of God. And seven is the number of perfection. So is it 6171 or 6171? I'm done. Somebody put it together. <laughs> Somebody now, uh, it's simple. Prophet man of God. Or perfect man of God. <clears throat> no, you are not putting it well. Remember, the first one is six. When you bring God first, you interfere with the entire interpretation. Because the first one is not number one, it's number six. So it's a man that needs God to perfect his life. And the same God will sustain the perfection. There is a particular person that needs God to bring perfection. And that God that perfects him is the same God that will sustain him. Six one, seven one. A different dimension. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. or, or you add it. Uh, it's still simple. Now that's why I said no, I, I, I ran away from number 10 because number 10 still means now you are perfected, you are made whole. Right? So you want nothing, you lack nothing. God is the one sustaining. But again, if you go that direction, somebody may not be perfect in interpretation because you look at one and zero. Do you see the risk now? Because when you say ten, somebody will look at one and zero. And if somebody looks at one and zero, and mostly they are not able to pick the spiritual environment around, they will miscommunicate it. Because somebody can choose to add again one plus zero. And now they'll get zero, isn't it? But his way is the shortest way. He's thinking like a prophet. But for a trainer or a learner, you miss something. 6171. Are you done? Now, shoes. Like I said, who can try? 
losing shoe in the dream or something? You are losing direction. You need direction. There is an attack to your direction. There is... Give her a microphone. She's far. We want to hear what she's saying. At the back. So it could mean an, either an attack to direction. God is redirecting you. Or there is a losing of direction. Or there is need for direction. When you hear about the shoe. So if it was lost... Something is lost. What is lost? Direction. Is that so? Okay. It means uh, losing your destiny or an attack to your destiny. An attack to your journey of destiny. That's correct. That's correct. Now, let me try ask. What was your question? A lost padlock. <clears throat> Anybody that can try that? You are looking for a padlock that was, is lost. There is some insect. Uh -huh. Something that concerns your future. Something that is around you, but there is an attack. Okay, the primary thing is attack. So let's pick the word attack. Are we together? But let's go deeper now in interpretation. And I want you, one thing I want you to understand with my examples is the simplicity. I like the way he's thinking, but it's trying to complex dimension. Now let's go simple. <clears throat> a padlock signifies an attack. Are we together? You are trying to find a padlock. Meaning you are trying to find the root cause of your attack. I feel I'm under attack, but I'm not, I don't know how. So you are trying to find out what could be the root cause of my attack because it's a padlock, meaning something is locked. But if you saw a padlock, it's different from when you're looking for a padlock. So when you saw a padlock, exactly what Steve is saying. There's an attack either around you or in your destiny. Why? That's why you saw something locked. Pad, the padlock, the word padlock is to pad, pad. But if you're looking for it, you're trying to find. I think I need to continue with this one in the main service next time. Uh -huh. Can we have microphone, please, for them? Because there are people who are, they're not hearing. Please, okay, can, yes. can you? Uh, it's just a question. What if, or maybe in your, in your dream, there is, uh, if she, there is a padlock, and now you see a padlock locked, and now you see a padlock that is not locked. I think we did have different kind of information uh, uh, as well. Now, okay. The padlock that is locked is already a tied destiny. But generally, padlock is an attack. So if it's open, there is an attack that is still not yet affecting you. It's a coming attack. But it's not, you are not yet in bondage. It has not yet started functioning negatively. But the one that is already locked you're already inside of an, an, an unlock kind. Are you following what I'm saying? So generally it signifies attack, but when it's not open, then it is not fully in function. But when it's locked, ah! And when you see a padlock that has rust, and you, you are struggling to open, it was giving you stress. You are dealing with ancient altars. Rust signifies long, 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 ancient altars. <laughs> give, give the ah, and then let's come here. I'm taking only one more. We have to close. Take it to her, please, and help me doing it very quickly. And then you, I think it should be the last for now. Yes. We will, tomorrow, next Sunday, again, we are continuing. Are we together? So next Sunday, I think I will just do question and answer only before I go to the next topic. Because many people are leaving. So you, that question, write it somewhere. There is something, there is something you saw a prophet saying, you didn't understand what he meant, eh, put it somewhere. Next Sunday, the school of the prophet, I will try to explain what it means. What it means. Um, Dad, what about dimensions of uh, someone who was close to you in your life, like maybe your grandmother? Okay, hold it for me. Hold it for me. I want somebody when she finishes that will bring the microphone here. Okay, continue. Uh, somebody, somebody that was close to your life. Yeah, like maybe your grandmother, your mother, 
a father, or, but is late. So they come to you in the dream and they give you maybe a shoe. They come in the dream and they give you a shoe. Yeah. Ha! And it's dead. Okay. 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 Let's pick this one here. Next Sunday on will be deep, isn't it? Those who miss school of the prophet, oh Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Um still on the padlock. Uh-huh. Um this is reality. I saw someone mm -hmm. and then they they were like a, a prophet. Mm -hmm. So there was this kind of thing he was saying about the padlock. So like he hung the padlock somewhere and then like members could pass. When you pass the it is locked. Another one passes it's locked. Like we okay. didn't understand what was going on. Oh it, it like when somebody passed they unlock and then they lock. Yes. So when another one passes, they unlock, they lock. When, 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 uh, before a person comes, it, it's unlocked. It's unlocked. But once the person passes, it's locked. It's locked. Yes. <laughs> Is that man a witch or a prophet? <laughs> that's, that's clearly witchcraft. How do you allow people to pass? Then instead of opening, you lock. That's what I call manipulation. Right? Because that person understands spirituality. That person understands what? Spirituality. Two things. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Let me be careful with my words. I'm online. <laughs> the pastor is trying to bewitch members not to leave his church. So he ties your spirit and your soul to him. Because you don't know the words that he has spoken on the padlock. That is number one. Number two, he's trying to switch favors of members to him. He's trying to trade with that which is in you against you. So that you remain there to keep depending on him. If it has ever happened to you, I must lift a prayer for you. Are you following? <clears throat> ah! That man must be a witch. He doesn't, he doesn't deserve. But you know, prophetic ministry is full of mysteries. Are you following? So some people go to the extreme because of lack of knowledge of the word of God. So sometimes it may be a person acting out of ignorance, trying to signify unlocking people's destiny. Now what happens when we pray with the padlock? And I think one of the days we need to do those mysteries. Are we together? But this is how it happened. Everybody needs to have their own padlock. Are you following? Let those padlocks be anointed and words spoken over them. Let them be readily locked when we are praying to signify an attack that is already existing. So when we are praying, we open them to signify a release. Do you understand what I mean? As a prophetic action, as we are praying, we unlock, we unlock. But how do you allow me to pass and you lock? I pass, you lock. <gasps> so that was an error. Let me not say witchcraft. It was wrongly done. Uh, it was you and her. Now she dreams with a person that belongs, a family relation. And this family relation <coughs> gave her a shoe. Uh, try that one, my son. Right, that is simple. Collect microphone. Collect microphone. <coughs> My peer, I wanted you to try one. Let me, um, okay, I will the, see the, it on the peer to the prophet. I, I wanted you to try one. <laughs> yes. You see those who I went, the teacher asked questions. Teacher, 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 teacher. This one, you must answer one before you go. Mama you must answer one. You've been around for some time. Uh -huh. okay, mama says she saw uh, somebody transferring, giving her the shoe in the dream. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it on two uh, dimensions. Is either I'll come back to the to the drawing board and ask who was the person, which kind of life was the person living before she died? Mm -hmm. Was she either Christian or she was in, into other things? Mm -hmm. So if she was into other things. She's either she's passing the shoe. She wanted to continue with where she left. Mm -hmm. That's number one. 
But if she was a man of God or either a woman of God, it's either she wanted to walk in the same path and direction she was walking into. Yes. Wow. 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 Give her a microphone. She has lifted her hand, so meaning she's not satisfied. She's satisfied. Allow us to, be to answer this one is the last one. Are we together? Because of time. Um, or oh, next Sunday morning, if you miss, you will have missed a lot. Are you being helped? Are you being helped? Uh huh. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. But in the same context, it still gave me like three keys. The same same person. Yes. Gave you three keys. Now answer three answer keys. his question. Was the person a believer or an unbeliever? Three keys, but he's late. But okay, the person was he a born again person or not? So let's first know which kind of person she was. Yes, that will help yes. us. So that we can help you easily. Okay, if she was a Christian. Was a Christian. What was she doing in the Christian faith? Was she as a believer or she was a pastor, was a leader, was was she a, was she? I would say she was a practicing Christian, not like she was a She was not like or oh, she was just a, a, she was a serious Christian. A serious, yeah, okay. A serious Christian. Okay. <clears throat> okay. 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 Let me say that is satisfactory answered. Because that one still takes us back to what he said. Are we together? So I want you to give uh, Pastor Emma a, a microphone. I want her to answer a question. You know, we, don't, we only have one Pastor Emma around. <laughs> Your question is this. <clears throat> when you see somebody pregnant, <clears throat> what does that mean? In the prophetic. When you see somebody pregnant, Yes. In the prophetic. Yes. Wow. <laughs> like Papa was here and he was able to see a pregnant woman who, was, who is not even in church. And he was able to talk about an attack. Are we following? Uh -huh. So that is revelatory. But what is pregnancy? What is pregnancy in the prophetic? Huh? Blessings. Blessing. Unexpected blessing. Yes. If you don't put it that way, you spoil it. Okay. Okay. Now give my PA. Then Steve, I will, answer. I will also ask you one. <laughs> if ever you must answer one as well. You are long, long students of my school of the prophet. What was the question? <clears throat> uh, you asked a bit complex. Somebody was sleeping. And in the dream, in their dream, they are dreaming that their child that was sleeping by them has vanished. Mbona watu nakaa nyuma na nacha mbele? Yes, somebody was sleeping in their dream, not physically. They were sleeping with a child. And when they were dreaming, the child that was sleeping by them disappeared. And the child reappeared. I think for me, it means it's diabolical in the sense that when you have a child and then disappears, appears, disappears, that child is under atta an attack. It could be that the dark world is after that child. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's one dimension. Okay, give favor to also try. That's one dimension because the child could be under attack. But now that one would make sense in the dream perspective. So I want us to go in the prophetic perspective. Is that okay? Because I want you to, what, I want, what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to teach you how to separate dream interpretation from prophetic interpretation. Uh -huh, try the same one. Yes. A child means, uh, it seems, it, I mean, it uh, means your ministry. Or, what can I, how can I put it? Mission, not mission. Even in Swahili, what I have to skip. Uh, I think it's your ministry or that which God has, your destiny. That which God has purposed for you to do, like, uh, like, uh, like, say, in my ministry, I am a, I'm a, a singer. You're a pastor. Someone else, whatever you do. Mm -hmm. So I think, if you sleep, and then you you're sleeping with your child beside you, and then the child disappears, it means that. You've been sleeping in the work of God, or rather you've been sleeping in prayer, so you have lost your ministry. No, you are correct, but you are overthinking. <laughs> in the interpretation, keep it simple. When you overthink, you spoil. 
When you overthink, you spoil. I, I'm trying to communicate a point. And does it make sense? The main thing here is, okay, try and also try. Uh -huh. uh, Papa, you have said that a child, this person had a child. They had. Then this child disappeared. Disappears. Then later the child reappears. Reappears. Mm. Or a child simplifies blessing. In the book of Psalms, mm. the Bible says children are a heritage from the Lord. Yes. Is that so? Uh -huh. Now you are getting line. So when a child disappears, uh -huh. it means there is a blessing that has been taken away. Mm -hmm. So when he reappears, it means there is a restored blessing. Powerful. Uh, try and then I think my concern would first be if the child disappears uh -huh. and he appears. Number one, my concern would be what was my reaction after he when he disappears. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Number two, when he appears, what was my reaction as well? Mm -hmm. Because if he disappears and I was worried, that's, an that's a different interpretation. And now when he disappears and he appears and there was joy, is another different. That's according to me. So, so yes, sir. Okay. They are trying all of them. You, you, you need to have clapped for everybody because everybody has tried. Uh -huh. Maybe I can give it a last try. I think for me, I'll go back to uh, a child. Uh -huh. What is a child? Uh -huh. A child is some, some, something you cherish, uh -huh. something, something that is actually sensitive. Uh -huh. So for me, it's something you need to guard. These mm -hmm. things that keeps on going and coming back. Mm -hmm. Maybe God is telling you, be careful with what I have given you mm -hmm. because you need to care for it, you need to nurture it, you need to grow it, you need mm -hmm. to replenish. Nurture and train. Okay. Okay, let me sum all of it together. I said you are sleeping. The word sleep means spiritual insensitivity. Is that there? Are we there? And then you had a child who had, uh, you physically the child was there in the dream, the child disappeared and appeared. In, is an, an unstable blessing that you have that you need to wake up from the slumber and guard. So that's the word. And when we talk about guard, pray. Are we together now? So if then we want to go deeper, like Steve is doing, now we begin to ask what was the mood in the dream? How are you feeling when it appears and disappears? Were you surprised? Are we together? So it, it can mean four things. The last question, now my time. Let's rise up on our feet. No, we are 10.30 already. Let's rise up on our feet, even as she asks. Let's be upstanding, even if she asks. Give her a microphone, please, even as she asks. Let's be upstanding. Let's be upstanding. Let's be upstanding. It's 10.30. Jesus Christ. We are late. Let's be upstanding. I've eaten into the service. Uh-huh. Papa, um, the same case, uh -huh. you are... But I was not asleep. This happened. Mm -hmm. I was not asleep, uh, but my child was asleep. So I stepped out. When I came in, I, told, I saw two of them, and I felt fear. And I began to, I began to pray. You, you saw your two children, or you saw one child uh, in one two? One child in two, like twins. And I felt fear, and I began to, to pray against Nikki. I, I did not know who was who. Until one disappeared, and I was left with my own. We will answer that one next Sunday. So write it for me, don't forget because of time. Lift up your hands and begin to declare in the name of Jesus. This service today, I connect myself. I connect myself, and I declare that in the name of Jesus, any attack that has been in my life by this service I declare it shall be lifted it shall be removed it shall be lifted it shall be removed any attack in my marriage in my finances in my health in my ministry in my life I declare let it be lifted let it be lifted lift up your voice and declare let every attack be lifted in the name of Jesus let every attack be lifted in the name of Jesus. Let every attack be lifted in the name of Jesus. Let every attack be lifted in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and declare. Let every attack be lifted in the name of Jesus. Let every attack be lifted in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Lift your hands and start to worship the Lord this morning. 
Lord, we bless you. We exalt your name. We say thank you. Someone just declare, open your mouth and start worshiping the Lord. Lord, we worship you. We exalt you and we worship you and we bless your name, oh Jesus. Be lifted, be exalted, oh Lord. I want to hear somebody open their mouth and start worshiping the Lord. Lord, may our worship rise. You are our God. For the Lord will lift your name, O Jehovah. Be I want to hear somebody open their mouth and worship the Lord. For the Lord will love you. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you because of your faithfulness. Thank you because of your goodness, O oh Lord. Thank you because you have brought us this far. Thank you because you have lifted us, O oh Jehovah. Thank you because today we are alive. Thank you to, because today we can breathe. Thank you. Father, we bless you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you.